welcome to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melon Nostalgic Runner, and we are back for another episode of The Real Housewives of Potomac. And this was, well, I'll put it in the description because you know I've been struggling lately when it comes to this because there's just so many housewife shows. But the the name will be in description um, for the season because um, I honestly <laughs> I don't remember because I just literally just got done watching it on Peacock. And, um, yeah, um, I guess I had some thoughts and I did not take any notes. Um, and I think that's also the reason why lately, actually full disclosure, that is actually the reason why lately I'm not remembering the seasons or like the actual, um, episode number or even the name because lately the way I've been doing this, I've been filming it filming my review right after I watch the show or while I'm watching the show, if I'm watching it on Bravo and, um, <laughs> whisper, of course she couldn't help herself. She had to make an appearance on this video. Um, oh, also to, um, yeah. So th that's one of the reasons why. And, um, I honestly, outside of Roni, when I was reviewing Roni, I'm enjoying the show to the point where I'm not taking any notes. So like anything that I see is off the dome is after my first first time watching. Um, so there's a lot of things that I may, may miss because I'm literally watching it. And um, yeah, so um, without further ado, let's up, uh, oh, one more thing that I wanna cover before we get into the review. So you've noticed I've been playing around with the locations again. I'm back to this original location that I used to film at when I first started doing um, YouTube. And the reason why is that this room does not echo. So I've determined that it has nothing to do with the mics. It has everything to do with that particular room that I was filming in. It echoes like really badly to the point where you're getting a lot of, um, it's not the best quality when it comes to sound. And I don't want to give you less than. And so even though I rather have that space for it to be, that's technically supposed to be the space for where I do reviews and stuff, it's not going to work. And honestly, that's fine because for those who know, I have other things going on when it comes to like my personal channel, like my personal um, vlog stuff that I have on this channel. Um, I am planning on actually buying and moving so that is going to be one of those things that I check um, wherever I end up moving at. And that's when you'll start seeing even more changes. So more to come in 2025. In 2025, you're going to see a lot of changes when it comes to my reviews, my quality of videos. And um, yeah, but I don't want to put the money into it yet for a location that's temporary, basically. Uh, I'm going to be having a more permanent location and it's going to be a dedicated space for this kind of thing along with like my work um, with better sound quality, if that makes any sense. Anyway, I know I kind of went over the place right there. I just kind of wanted to give you a little intro on that before we get into the review. Uh, without further ado, let's get into review. First things first, um, we actually are still continuing this countdown when it comes to um, Karen's court date and um, I think it's only at this point when they're when we're on the show or watching it's only two days before the court date um, and um, we're at Giselle and Ashley's GNA event and Wendy <laughs> um, Wendy's great on this show by the way but now I see kind of how they're using her Wendy um, is kind of fulfilling both her role and the um, Candace role at the same time. Like she's doing two jobs. And I didn't realize until Candace was no longer on the show how much Candace and her clapbacks and confessionals and stuff and, and that kind of thing and her commentary, it's missed. I know a lot of y'all don't like Candace, but like that was, she was like the, she was a reader of the group. And Wendy, she does, she is a reader, but she isn't as, I feel like Wendy isn't as natural with it. Um, and hers is a little bit more, not as 
<laughs> it doesn't have as much of a punch. It's a little bit more subtle. Um, but Stacy's also a reader too. So I, I see what they're doing right now when it comes to that, but I just, there's just certain scenes, certain things. I'm like, man, that would hit different Candace if we had Candace feedback and <laughs> what's happening. <laughs> um, cause I do miss Candace. I know. If y'all don't like her, whatever. Um, I do. Um, I don't miss Robin because Robin does have a toxicity about her. Um, at least on this show, she definitely reminds me of a very unevolved Aries. And I'm an Aries, so I can say that. I know when I was more like a Robin, and now I'm not. <laughs> but I did a lot of work to change that. And child, she hasn't. At least according to how she's on the show. Um, but I am looking forward to see Robin on um, Traders. So um, let me know, actually, in the comments if y'all want me to review Ch Traders for Season 3. Because the cast lineup, at least when it comes to the Bravo celebrities that are on Traders... I'm, I'm intrigued. It's uh, it's enough where I'm like, hmm, I might review this show. But anyway, they're at the GNA event. And the reason why I brought Wendy is because Wendy's just shading it. She's like, I don't know what this is. Because Giselle is has rebranded or she's claiming she's rebranded GNA um, to more of a lifestyle type deal and not just like a apparel place. Um, because... Again, they originally rolled this out as if like th this was like athleisure wear, but yet when you go on the site, I don't know if it, they've updated, but there wasn't really much of that on the site. Um, but now, um, since Giselle's dad's passing, she decided she's going to repurpose it to like more of a lifestyle type of um, venture. So they're doing like a like a like a work workout a thon type situation. At, at a rooftop location. It's really cool, really nice. Um, something similar to what we have in Chicago in the summer months. We'd be having these kind of things along the lakefront, um, kind of close to like the, um, I want to say we usually have it like closer to like the Lincoln Park um, neighborhood location. So like off the Fullerton stop when you're like on the Lakeshore Drive. For those who live here, y'all already know what I'm talking about. We, we be having workout-a-thon type events. Um, sometimes we even have like, um, it, it's just, and it's, it's on the lake. It's the ambiance, ambiance, the ambiance thing because the summer times in the shy is just the best. Just saying. Point blank period. Argue with your mom on that. But anyway, it just remind me of that a little bit that they're doing kind of a workout-a-thon type situation. And um, so they're doing this all the ladies were there, minus Karen. They weren't sure if Karen's going to be there or not. And it turned out that um, Karen did um, text. I don't remember who. I think she texted Kiana, um, KK. She texted um, KK at the group and let her know that she wasn't coming um, because she's just really stressed about this court date because the court date's two days away. And so um, they do the work I thought. Ashley sings that song, Healing Thriving. That's actually kind of the name of this episode, actually. It's named after that song or whatever. And the ladies are shading her. Because <laughs> all of them are just like, girl, she can't sing. Because she can't. She can't. Like, she can karaoke sing, but she can't sing. And, um, yeah. Because even when she, because the thing is, she because she performed the song, right? And when she's performing the song, you could tell that she can't sing because she's singing through her throat and it's coming up very nasally and she's going out of breath. She's getting out of breath and like you could hear her breath as she's singing and walking around. And um, so the reason why I'm saying this side note, I maybe y'all don't know this about me, but I was in choir from... I would say, well, no, I wouldn't say. Like, I was in choir from, like, fourth grade, well, fourth, fifth grade-ish, all the way to, like, college. And um, I took singing lessons. I was in, actually, besides my church choir, I actually auditioned and got in my community choir. So I was in um, my hometowns, um, Indiana, somewhere in Indiana, um, and I was able to 
I, I auditioned and got in that. And I've even um, tried to get a record deal a couple times with my voice. So, yeah, your girl used to be able to sing. Now, my voice isn't what it used to be anymore because it is a muscle and I have not been utilizing it the way I should. And um, also, I temporarily smoked and, you know, just things that damage your vocal cords. I did that. So, um, I know I could probably bring it back up to par if I really, really wanted to. But I'm kind of nervous about that just because I feel like, um, actually, I don't feel like I know my voice would be different because I already, at, when I was a singer, I was um, an alto who could do soprano. Like, I could do soprano notes. Like, it just was stressful and hard to do it. But I can, I would be able to train my vocals enough to do it. And yeah, no, I wouldn't be able to do that today. <laughs> But anyway, I say all that. I know I just made it about me a little bit, but it's my channel. Hello. Um, but I say all that because Ashley, you can tell she's just not, I feel like she's not taking the singing thing seriously at all. I, I feel like she just wants to do it just because Candace did it. And I hate to call a thing a thing, but it's just to me, it's like, uh, I feel like she just, her this thing for Candace is telling or was telling for me. I think it had a lot to do with the fact that she kind of just really wanted to be her um, and not be in her situations that she was in. Um, we'll get into that a little bit more in the episode because we actually do. Actually, actually, it started to have like a little bit of a storyline, at least this episode. And I don't really love Ashley. I actually kind of can't stand her when it comes to like how she's treated people throughout the years on this show. But I am slightly intrigued because, um, yeah, aesthetically, Ashley's a good looking woman. I'm just going to call a thing a thing. <laughs> okay. And my Vandy side can get behind and see what you're doing. And also too, there is a part of me that cleans sl slates every season. So I try to pretend the other seasons didn't exist to see what you're giving this season. And so I am trying to do that, um, mainly because how toxic Potomac was. I'm trying to, I'm really trying to give everyone a chance. Even though Ashley's old colors will, it always shows because of even how she treated KK a couple episodes ago. So there's that. But anyway, so after the girls are kind of just like getting on Ashley for her horrible singing, and I'm glad they did because child, she can't sing. Um, Giselle and all the ladies, they do um, hold hands. And Giselle does lead the ladies in prayer when it comes to Karen and her situation. And I do appreciate how Giselle is actually handling the Karen situation because you're gonna this season we're either gonna get Giselle was gonna lead the charge of get getting on Karen and kind of being you know trying to hold her overly accountable or you're gonna get the other side where she was gonna be supportive um now I will say this I kind of wish some of the ladies were trying were able to somewhat hold her accountable but the way Karen is deflecting and dodging and weaving and all the things the only way you're going to be able to do it, unfortunately, it seems like is how like me and some of the other ladies are doing it who are doing things wrong. But the problem is the people who are on the other side trying to do this can't read. <laughs> um, so it doesn't work. Um, but anyway, so Giselle does lead them in prayer and she is, she does share her confessionals. She actually is super concerned for Karen. Um, that does come up later on, but not in this scene. So let's, we'll table that for now. Um, from there, we do see that Mia um, sits all the ladies down and explains what happened when it comes to Gordon. And I'm over Mia. I'm going to just call a thing a thing. I, I'm really hoping this is Mia's last season. Um, because it is changing the quality of the show and not in a good way. It's very um, love and hip hop-ish. And I also kind of find it very disgusting what she's doing because it's very obvious she does she she's exploiting her kids yeah this storyline is just not good for the kids at all um i i don't feel sorry for gordon all the way i mean the only thing that i can maybe 
feel somewhat sorry for is the mental health thing. And so that's the other thing that's getting me too. And because I actually am someone personally who has some challenges with that, along with that being a family history of mine of those kind of challenges, I feel a way that she's really exploiting that. Like, you can't justify your shitty behavior and you holding him down and even his ishy behavior over that because those those don't equate. I hate to call a thing a thing, but it doesn't equate. You know, as someone like I, um, for those who don't know, um, my mom also is bipolar one. Um, so I've dealt with seeing this kind of dynamic all my life and, um, but my mom's an angel. <laughs> I, 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 she, she honestly in my eyes could not do any wrong. She's like one of the most God fearing people I know. And so I, when it comes to like toxicity and stuff like that, I hate that. I, I feel like. The way Mia's putting this together, she's making it seem like people who deal with these kind of struggles are bad individuals. They do horrible things. They have no control over mor morals and morality. And that's just simply not true. And I, it really bothers me to see that on my screen, to be honest. Like, I don't like it. Um, so I am looking forward to the girls getting on her about all the things because... We knew this about Mia from day one, that she lies. Um, and I don't understand how we let that go for so long. I think it's partially because some a lot of the other ladies had nothing else going on, so they needed something. But at this point, we have... I feel like this is a solid cast. Um, do we really need Mia in this? I mean, maybe for maybe because she is the villain, maybe maybe so, but I don't know. I just I just feel I, I it's it's the wrong road for me. That's that's how I am with it. But so she basically just is like calling it out that like Ink Ink put them on pause because of how Gordon's acting. This that and this and uh, which just in case y'all didn't know, it was a lie. And we find out. We do find that out. So that scene ends. And then from there, we do go with Karen the next day. Um, I think it was actually two days later. And it's the court date. Um, now, um, Ray is being super supportive, being there for Karen. And um, I have a lot of thoughts when I see this whole thing. Um and I do feel bad for Karen to a certain degree, to a very small degree. I mean, very small, because you can tell she is going through some things. Um, but where my feeling bad for her ends is the fact that the accountability is missing. And the thing is, though, we are seeing this on the screen. And it is a lesson. It's a lesson here that we're seeing. When you're someone who constantly does not take accountability, you deflect, you distract yourself and don't get to the root of your issues, it will eat at you. And we're even seeing that with her and it's even mentioned a little bit later on in the episode. So they do get ready to go to court and she has her attorneys. Um, the mics turn off, they do go. And then fast forward, so while this is happening, we have the ladies, um, they do end up doing like a brunch situation. And um, first, Mia and KK show up. Um, KK's like, you know, we're going to try to start over again and do a clean slate and be cool with each other. We'll see how that goes. And so that's what they're doing. But then one by one, all the other ladies show up. The only person who wasn't there at this like um, rooftop brunch situation or drink situation that they were doing um, was Ashley. Ashley has something else going on at the moment. And so um, they're talking about the whole Karen situation. Um, they're trying to find out. Actually, this is after. Sorry, 
this is after it happened. This was um, after. And KK does explain like, hey, um, it got postponed. So she doesn't, she doesn't know the fate of what's going to happen until September now. So the, tr and according to Karen's attorney, um, because these were not filmed out, feel like in order. So yeah. So according to Karen's attorney, um, this was go, this went according to plan. Um, they're asked, how does she feel about this? And Karen's like, you know, the, I can't say much, but the league, like, and this is Karen's MO this whole time. She's just going to say, I can't say much, but she's like, this is just sometimes the legal process is slow. And so that's what happens there. Um, but you could tell like, so this is the other thing that I'm finding interesting. Karen, when she talks to KK, she says she's relieved that, you know, they at least got the ball rolling, but I know she's not relieved. I feel like this is actually adding more stress. And even Giselle calls it out. She's like, she can't be relieved because it's not over with. She still doesn't know what's going to happen with her. And then they actually talk about it with the ladies, like all the things that could potentially happen if found guilty. And one thing that was interesting that um, Wendy says, like, you know what, I'm going to stick beside her and everything and support her. But, you know, she's found guilty of these things you know, potentially endangering other people, that's not, that's not cool. And I was like, I'm glad someone else finally said it. I just need someone else to actually say that to Karen. Like, and say it in that way and not the way Mia's been doing it. Like, I need someone to actually really talk to her and say, hey, if you are guilty, you know, if you're found guilty of these things according to the law, which hopefully you're not, you got to make some changes. And I just wish someone would actually say that to her. Um, whether Karen reacts to it well or not, that's a whole nother thing. But like someone needs to have like a one-on-one -on -one scene with her and talk to her like that instead of doing kind of what they're doing. They're kind of outside like Mia and Jacqueline, they're tippy-toeing around the things. And honestly, if these people were some, like I wouldn't want that. And maybe Giselle behind the scenes has talked to Karen, probably. I'm pretty sure she probably has, but who knows. But anyway, so that's one of the things that's happening here. And um, I don't know. Oh, they, uh, Mia and um, Giselle were actually talking about how Karen is not looking good. She's lost some weight. And then they're like, yeah, no, Karen hasn't been eating. She hasn't been sleeping. And so, honestly, to me, it feels like there's just going to be more of that until September. Until she actually deals with things. And even when it came to when Ray was there to support her, I feel like he was physically there. And he even tried to make a joke about the situation. And, you know, it's a serious situation. It's not a joking manner. Um, it's clear to me that they're, they're together just to, just to be together. Like they're not, the love isn't, they have, I feel like they have a love for each other, but they're clearly not in love. It's very clear. Um, just because even the way he's showing up for her, I would want my partner to show up for me a little bit more supportive than even how he was showing up. Um, anyway, that's just me. But anyway, that's kind of what happens when it comes to both the Karen situation. And so basically they're putting a pin on that and we're moving on. Next, we see Ashley with her family. And um, we talk a little bit more about where she's at with the divorce proceedings. And we see Uncle Lump. I love me some Uncle Lump. So that is one redeeming quality for me when it comes to Ashley's family is Uncle Lump. Uncle Lump, I love it because he's like one of the only few people I feel like on her side that be talking some sense. And I think that was maybe Uncle Lump's wife or someone else who was in the in in the house because it was all like Ashley's like family. Um, she's having a gathering because it is her birthday, um, her birthday, and but she's celebrating it slightly early. And we find out Ashley actually feels away because Wendy's event for her birthday, because Wendy celebrated her birthday for all of 2024. Which girl, I did the same thing and still am doing so. 
we're here on that. When is your 40? When is a milestone birthday? I don't care. It's my birthday every day. Just saying. <laughs> and Wendy, especially if it's still the same month. Oh, come on. So Wendy has literally did that. But the thing is, she booked her birthday celebration, her all white party on Ashley's birthday. I was like, girl. <laughs> now, I don't know if it's going to come up later on this season. But you can't tell me that wasn't intentional. I feel like that was a little bit of get back from the way Ashley treated Wendy last season. Playing in all of her faces. And if it was, I approve, Wendy. You did that. <laughs> you did that. That's that Gemini petty, though. But the thing is, they're both Gemini. So why are we surprised? Um. <laughs> anyway. So then... um. So Ashley's like saying how she kind of feels away that that's a thing. But we see later on in the episode when she's there, she is fine. Um, so I don't know if we're going to see it, but who knows? It might come up if they end up having an argument. Who really knows? Anyway, so Ashley's talking about her deliberation and like all the risk and everything about it. And she gets emotional. And I'm just like, why are you so emotional over the Crypt Keeper? And what gets me with Ashley is, I will say this. And hopefully she watches this back and understands this. You cannot be preaching to your mom about how she needs to do this, that, and this, and that when you're doing the same thing. Like, leave the situation. I know you you learned that from your mom clearly. And yeah, the difference is at least you had you a high quality white man over her ish dude. <laughs> you know, at least the quality is different, but... I mean, honestly, we, we know about Michael and his character. His character is just as bad. It's not, it's not good character. You know, all, all money is not good money. Let's just put it that way. Okay? Um, but it did benefit Ashley. And I love that how her family called out all the BS. Like, Uncle Lump and the wife was like, you know... Your man or former man basically courted you when you were still, all practical purposes, a little girl, in my opinion. I was like, because, yeah, he did go after her when she was in her 20s, like early 20s, I believe, right? And so, I mean, okay, so for those who watch this review who are younger, I don't know what the age demographic is for everyone who watches this, but like, you don't know this until you get older. Because when I was in my 20s, I thought I was grown too. No. <laughs> I was not grown. I didn't know ish. I still don't know ish, but at least I know now that I don't know ish. And um, I also was... Um, Really young and dumb. Really young and dumb. And I'm so glad that some of my decisions that I made in my 20s did not stick. Because, man, if some of those decisions stuck and I had to just, like, stand in that, like, forever, oh, hell no. <laughs> and, unfortunately, a marriage would be one of those things that could potentially stick, right? And I honestly feel like, to a certain degree, um... I know some people mature differently and whatnot, but like, in, for, in my personal opinion, I don't think it's a good idea, especially now that quality of life and everything is so much better a lot in the world. I don't think anyone has any business getting married before they're like 24 or 25. I know I have friends who are exceptions. I come from actually a city where younger marriages are normal, but like, I look at a lot of them and a lot of them are divorced because it, it's not feasible in this day and age to be doing all that. Like, unless that person is going to truly grow with you. And, and the thing is, you don't have these kind of mature conversations when you're younger. So there was no way any of that would happen. But in Ashley's case, especially because this man was a rich man who had all the power, all the control, 
which I love at the very end, all of them said, control, control, control. And Ashley ends up walking away. But it's just like, I'm glad they're, they're talking sense into her. And even Sheila's like, girl, why are you still with this man? But it's just like, Sheila, you cannot talk either because you're doing the same thing. But I think Sheila secretly wants her daughter to break the cycle. And maybe seeing her daughter do it, maybe Sheila will do it. That might be part of it, you know, because the dynamic I know when it comes to Ashley and her mom is slightly different than most. Um, and so that might be it. But anyway, um, so also the other thing that we are learning, and I'm looking forward to both Ashley and um, really mainly Stacy's um, story, because we see in the next preview for next episode that they do talk more about deliberation. As someone who's never been um, married or divorced, um, I don't understand what deliberation is really. <laughs> I'll be honest, like I'm kind of dumb. And I, and I also don't come from a family where we don't have a lot of divorce in my family. Like my parents are still together. So like, I don't, I really don't know what this stuff is. <laughs> I'll be honest, like I just don't. And so apparently, all the skeletons that are particularly in your closet can come out during this time. So um, that conversation with Ashley happened where she was like, yeah, I do have proof of him. I do have proof of him being like, you know, of the infidelity. And I guess when there's money like that involved, that can change some things. So I am looking forward to see if we, if we do see any of that happening or more of what that is. I guess that's the only takeaway that I have when it comes to Ashley's situation. Because normally I would not care about Ashley's storyline at all. But I am interested in that just because I'm not as familiar when it comes to deliberations and whatnot. And I am curious to know what all that, what all that entails. Anyway, that's it when it comes to Ashley. <laughs> so now it's the day of the party. And um, what I will also say is that... Um, oh, day Wendy's party. Um, all the ladies are showing. Oh, no, no. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I almost forgot, but I kind of almost wanted to skip it, but I, it's important. So Mia ends up picking up ink at the airport. That's, I, and I'm not sure if this happened before Ashley's seeing or after, but right then there we see, oh, Mia be lying. In the words of Carlos Kane, Mia be lying. So she basically, um, so the producers asked like, so what did this pause mean that you just said? Because this was 24 hours later, by the way, or 24 to 40 hours later. It was like only a couple days later. It really wasn't that long. And then um, we do see more later on that she really was lying about this thing. Because like they didn't end a thing. Nothing has changed. And she's in the car. Um, She's in the car with Ink, and then she's just all like, yeah, that was rough, and this, that, and this, and that. And it's just like, girl. So right now, we already immediately see we cannot believe anything that Mia says. Like, we already couldn't believe it before we knew this, but, like, it's, got, it's getting worse. It's getting so much worse. And so, but on the way to the air, airport, she's talking to Jacqueline. So Jacqueline's aware of everything that's going on. Jacqueline, I feel like, is the only one that, like, knows um everything that is happening here but she's still being Mia's mouthpiece for the most part um side note I was glad we didn't see much of Jacqueline this episode but I am annoyed that she's around I just wish she wasn't there <laughs> but anyway so from there let's get so now let's get to Wendy's event because Wendy's event was like the main thing for this episode sorry and um I have to move whisper she is warm um <laughs> But so for those who don't realize, side note, I'm going to take a little pause again. Whisper is my best friend. This is Whisper. And she um, is very attached to me. Very attached to me. I have two cats, actually, by the way. And you rarely see the other one. If he knows I'm doing something work-wise, he's like, oh, she's doing something. He goes and does his own thing. This one, she doesn't care. She needs to be next to me at all times. 
Anyway, so back to the back to the review. It is a dating event, and um, so all the ladies are showing up one by one. And Ashley, girl, where what were you wearing? Okay, I'm just gonna and 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 I know everyone says this, but like I just really for what. Ashley, you are a very attractive woman. Respectfully. You're very much an attractive woman. Personality, okay. We we ain't talk about that. But aesthetically, especially since you've gotten the girls done, you look good. You look good. Why can't you just have the fashions to match how you look, though? And I'm not even talking about it being expensive. Like, yeah. It's the housewife show, so technically you really should be doing that. But like, we already know your storyline. You're concerned about money, resources, and all the things. And even like when it comes to like the co-parenting of it all, I get it. So the fashions, as far as like buying expensive things, doesn't it's not necessarily your priority. But you can make you can wear something cheap, cheap, but it doesn't have to look cheap. Respectfully, you always look cheap. I don't get it. I just really, oh, uh, I just really wish you had like a stylist. And, and you can get a stylist that isn't that expensive. And I know you were trying to dress sexy and provocative. There's a way of doing it and still giving class. And that's what's missing. Actually, it's kind of missing because of, never mind. We're not going to mention Candace again, but like it is. <laughs> I just did. But anyway, so back to the, the thing. So it's Wendy's event. Um, Ashley's wearing like this crown thing because it's her birthday. So she's just like letting everyone know it's her birthday at, at Wendy's event, which is fine. And they're just waiting for the host. And everyone's just like having their talk and doing their pleasantries. And then we get to Mia. Mia goes and talks to Wendy's mom. And um, she does apologize to Wendy's mom, but she don't, she didn't really apologize. She said I should, she, she's like, I, yeah, I need to apologize for that. So she didn't actually apologize. She just said, I need to apologize for that. And then her confessional, she continues to shade her still about the crow thing. And at first she was, didn't even know what she was apologizing to her for. Mia's so full of it. And um, Wendy's mom still just was giving grace. She's like, I, you know, I have been praying for you. I have been praying for you. And she's like, for once, I've been praying for you. I was like, Wendy's mom. Wendy's mommy, right. But, um, and then we do see some of like, um, Eddie's siblings there because that's the other thing with this event is outside of it being a housewife event. This is the event where it's a big deal because Eddie's family is actually there with Wendy's family celebrating Wendy. So it's a big deal because we know that Eddie's family has been estranged. And everyone's looking good. Um, happy Eddie has some happy Eddie there for everyone to have some of. Um, side note, so while this was happening, I actually went on Eddie's website for Happy Eddie, and I was disappointed, and I don't know if there's just like certain licenses you need. Um, they have Happy Eddie edibles, but like I didn't know how I could buy them, because I was going to buy them to support, but like you could buy the CBD, but you can't buy the THC. And I'm in a state where it's legal, so like I should be able to buy it, but I don't know how... It is when it comes to other states that are legal. Not sure about the licensing of it. But also, too, I just was honestly just checking for research purposes, to be honest. I don't partake. Anyway, um, so um, <laughs> uh, back to um, what was I going to say? Oh, so after that, then we do see... Um, the ladies, oh, Karen was there, so that was kind of nice. Um, and the ladies are basically just waiting for Wendy to make her grand entrance. And she actually, the grand entrance did land flat, and Giselle wasn't really wrong about it. It did go kind of land flat. And side note, 
a couple scenes before when they were all at that rooftop bar. The way Giselle looks at Wendy now, I think Giselle actually, and because I don't think Giselle's a good actress. I don't think that's what it is at all. I think Giselle, now she's let her guard down. I think she generally actually does like Wendy. I don't think it's the act. I think he, she enjoys Wendy. And I think part of it is because she's not on the opposite side of her where, you know, she's being called out or anything right now. So therefore, there's no reason for her to feel away when it comes to Wendy. I... Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm like, uh, I'm, I'm drinking the Kool-Aid. I might have been drinking the Kool-Aid, but it just, to me, the dynamic there, I was like, oh my gosh, I think Giselle's actually kind of somewhat tickled by Wendy. Like she actually likes her. It's weird. And honestly, uh, it, it annoys me because I'm just like, this could have been y'all forever. But like, I think it was the Candace thing. That I think that's all it was. I think this whole entire time, Giselle was just, more mad at Candace was like directing the energy to anyone, everyone that was kind of on that side of the house. I think that was part of it. But anyway, or also part of the new, it could have also been part of the newbie um, hazing thing that happens when it comes to a lot of these shows. A lot of these housewives do that. And Mia's trying to do it, but it's not working very well because <laughs> Mia's a walking read. So anyway, um, yeah, so... Wendy's trying to make her grand entrance. She's like in like this um, convertible looking boat situation because like it's off the water and the guy is just doing all these stunts and stuff. And like Giselle was like, this is kind of not really working because it's like land the boat. And all of us were thinking that and I was thinking it too. And we find out fast forward later on, Wendy was like, I had no idea what that guy was doing. I, <laughs> I didn't know if I was ever going to get on land. So she agreed, like, that was team too much. Because, like, <laughs> we're just like, uh. Anyway. So then while this is happening, um, all the ladies are just, like, kind of talking and stuff. And then we see that Stacy and Ashley um, were talking. And Stacy asked what's Ashley doing afterwards. She's like, I am going to, um, a, I'm going to do a drag king thing this evening. And, they're, and she's like, what's a drag king? And I was like. That was my reaction because I was like, girl, I don't think we realize, well, some of us might realize this, but like this episode was the episode where I really realized like, <gasps> Stacy's really sheltered. Like, I mean, sheltered. So it honestly checks out for me how the TJ and Stacy thing is happening. She is sheltered. Um... And I'm just want now I'm more intrigued to know um, how this deliberation stuff's going to go because um, it was kind of mentioned by Ashley, but now I want to know more because Ashley mentions that her and um, Stacey have a lot in common because they do. They're both yoga people. They both um, have, you know, mixed children. They both were with um, wealthy foreign white men. And one thing I'm noticing though, I think is the opposite dynamic because of Ashley's personality versus Stacy's personality. Ashley's rough around the edges and kind of probably was like a wild girl. And I think Michael liked that. Like, oh yeah, we, we're going to have some fun. Um, whereas... Stacy is very wholesome, clean, very classy, very demure, very mindful, and probably was considered like a, a very beautiful, amazing trophy wife. So I think we have two opposite dynamics of that, and it's clashing. But I secretly need Stacy to, she needs to have a hoe face. I want so badly for Stacey to have a hoe phase. I want her to have an experimental phase. Phase. I want her, the cobwebs have to leave. So to me, it's clear she really isn't having the, the SEX. And she wasn't even before the TJ situation. Um, I feel like when it came to the sexuals of it all, it was on um, 
her ex's terms and her, his terms only. It was never about her. And I think she's still moving in that kind of a way where things are never about her. And she really needs to be being her selfish girl era and make it about her. And maybe this group can help. I think Ashley could, especially as long as Ashley don't do anything backstabby towards her. I really hope she does not. Um, Cause I, I do like this dynamic, but I'm afraid because it's Ashley. <laughs> but I don't know that. I don't know why, but it just dinged at me when I was like, oh, you don't even know what a drag king is. So Ashley had to explain this to her. And like, like, and Stacy was just so shocked. She was like, everyone else knows what this is, but not me. And so fast forward, they all go sit down. And then even Wendy joins them and everything. They're all sitting down. They're at their assigned seats. And Stacy talks to um, Ray and like asks him, does he know what this is? And he's like, no, not really. And she's like, so he doesn't know what it is. I'm like, well, he's a straight man. <laughs> He's a straight man of a particular age. So yes, he's probably not going to know what that is. But I'm like, girl, girl. And even the way Ashley was describing things in her confessional, I'm like, girl, do you want to like, do you want to? <laughs> I think Ashley's kind of attracted to Stacey and her innocence in a way. But in um, kind of a sexual way. <laughs> That's kind of how I'm viewing it. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. But um, so we do find out, though, that um, Ashley is doing Drag King stuff. So, oh, for those who don't know, because I just assume people do know what Drag King is. A Drag King is, is literally a woman dressing up as a man at a drag show. And Ashley's um, Drag King name, she said, was, um, I think it was... Uh, Ottoman or something like that. It was a, it was a, it was a cute name. It was actually cute, and I could see I could see this. And then she even talked to an octave deep, a, a little octave deeper, like Erica Fesha. I was like, oh, you were into this. But we knew this because last season we saw that she does like the drag stuff and all that. And honestly, it's a, it's a nice, cute, quick coin for like the for the housewives because a lot because a lot because the gays love the housewife shows. So I mean, hello. And if you are like very open and free. Especially like an Ashley, this all makes sense. Like, I'm not really surprised. Um, because you do have Ashley Darby fans, mainly because aesthetically, because aesthetically, she's an attractive woman, and and a lot, a lot of gay people, a lot, of, well, a lot of people in general, because I'm kind of like this too. Like, you can sometimes compartmentalize the personality of the person, but like, well, you are fabulous. Like, I mean, I do that with Erica Jane very regularly when it comes to like the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. She is not the nicest person, clearly. But like, I feel like it'll, it'll, she'll be a fun time to party with. <laughs> like, it's just like, you know, it's one of those. Anyway, um, so after the after this, we have this weird interaction between TJ and Stacy. And TJ just fills away because like Stacy was just kind of doing her housewife's thing and talking to all of her friends. And he's like, why don't you introduce me to anyone? And he's like, do better. And I'm like, it's just like, it don't touch. He's like, don't touch my hand. And I'm like, justice for Stacy, Girl, you do not need this guy in your life. He's not, he's not e eating. He ain't, he's, he's not doing anything for you. He's a leech. He, so he can't mingle himself and you're getting nothing out of this? Girl, if you cut this man loose, if you do not cut this man loose, you know, he doesn't have enough charisma to do this himself and, him, and he's an actor? What is that? Girl. <clears throat> Yeah, hopefully, and clearly we saw what was happens live, and so I think they're still entertaining each other. I just don't like it. I don't like the CJ guy, and th and th this scene was enough for me where I was kind of over it. Um, he's just a leech. He's a leech hanger on her. 
And I need Stacy to get her single girl air because clearly she has some incense about her. She can keep that incense to a certain degree, but like, girl, you need your back broken out just a little bit. Because clearly you don't want to be celibate. He wants to be celibate. And I, he, and for me, the problem is with that is it's not even about the celibacy. It's the fact that he won't, eat, he doesn't even respect you enough to even give you intimacy of any form. Like holding hands is like, we do that in second grade. That has nothing to do with sex. That's just intimacy. That's a closeness. He doesn't even want to do that with you. Why is he around? I'm just. Sorry, that's my rant. I'm done with it. Moving on. So then to end this to end the episode, um, we do see that um they're all talking, and Giselle's like, let's let me talk to me real quick. Cause after um they do talk to um they do briefly talk to Wendy's like happy birthday girl. Yes, that was cute. And then that's when Wendy does confess, like, yeah, I didn't know what he was doing with that boat. <laughs> and then like, and then they just have a cute kiki. And Giselle's like, hey, I'm gonna go talk to me real quick. And but they're all there together. And but like I feel like Giselle gave Wendy the look like, yeah, I gotta talk to her. And so she go she talks to her and she's like, now, you consoled in us and you were burying your soul with us just two or three days ago about how you and Ink are like not doing well and you and Gordon are not doing well. But yet, within 24 hours of you telling us this, y'all are all partying and he's driving the boat like in Ink's mouth and all that shit. What is that? And that's kind of where the episode ends. Um, and even to, oh, side note. So in the confessional, when the producers asked her about that pause, she was, the, 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 I could tell you lying because when you're replying, stutter, stutter, stutter. She was stuttering. It was bad. It was bad. And so um, they do show the Instagram video of this happening. And then all the ladies are shocked. They're like, wait, girl, what? Like, how are you going to tell us all this? And then, and then this is like the opposite of that. And then Giselle also shares, like, you know, states in her confessional, she's like, yeah, with Mia, I'm just sick of this. Like, I am tired of this. When I'm not sick, I'm sick and tired. Like, it's just, I, we can never tell when she's telling the truth. And then the producers roll back all the times where she's lied. Well, not all the times, because there's a lot more than just like the times, but all the times where it was like proven it was a lie. Um, well, not all the times, because, child, she lies a lot. <laughs> but they literally had, like, a thing for each season since she's been on the show of her lying about something. And um, even before that, um, you could tell Giselle and her opinion of her was changing because at the event when she was burying her soul and talking about, like, the ink thing and the all the things that she was saying, it was very... Giselle was like, this is too much. This isn't really okay. This is too much. And I know where Giselle's speaking from because there's kids involved. I think that's the thing that she's like, girl, what are you doing? Um, oh, but the way it actually ends is that Mia's like, you know, both of my, ba both of my, both of my um, baby fathers get along just fine. And they're like, baby fathers? And that's where she is. And that's where the episode ends. And... This is where I'm like, Mia, wrong road. You are now truly exploiting your parent. I mean, exploiting your um, kids. You're going to put on national TV that these guys are both your baby fathers and you don't even know that for sure. This is like the, it's love and hip hop and I'm so mad. I don't like that they're making Potomac love and hip hop. With this, the way they are doing these storylines, no wonder they never get a good cast trip. No wonder they don't have an after show. You're declassing the show. Like, I really so badly want Potomac to have a budget. Even actually Atlanta has a better budget than, um, than Potomac. So I, I'm not blaming it on it being a black show. I'm blaming it on a someone like a Mia. 
And even honestly, to a degree, Ashley, because Ashley isn't the most classiest either. And then even regular Robin, in the words of Kim Pyre, um, I, I need y'all do better. I need y'all do better, especially this Mia situation. I'm just so irritated and not happy with how it's going. But anyway, that does conclude the video. Um, it was actually a good episode, even though I'm annoyed. Um, but I'm annoyed at Mia. And I'm annoyed that um, <clears throat> we're basically watching her exploit her kids and exploit mental health disorders on national TV. Yeah. So... That's where my beef is with it. Um, you know, if you're going to lie, because I mean, all the ladies lie. Because Karen lies too. They all lie. But like, let it be not exploitative. And that's where I, that's where you're losing me. I'm kind of on the same train as Giselle right now when it comes to this. And I never thought I would say at the beginning of the season that I would be on Giselle's side of anything. But so far, when Giselle's been right, she's been right. And the, the rebrand and redemption season for her is working. Anyway, but that does conclude the video. Um, please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melanin Nostalgia Runner. And I will see you next time. Bye. Don't